Although most of Christianity teaches a place of eternal suffering for those that don't believe in Jesus, many don't realize that the Bible doesn't actually teach such a thing. The word hell is a poor translation of one Hebrew word, Sheol, and three Greek words, Hades, Tartarus, and Gehenna. The Hebrew word Sheol, which we find in the Old Testament, simply means the abode or resting place of the dead. It is not a place of conscious torment. In fact, throughout the Old Testament, whenever we see someone die, they rested or slept awaiting the resurrection. They weren't conscious. Conscious. The Greek word Hades is the equivalent of Sheol, also meaning the abode of the dead. In 2 Peter 2, 4, hell is translated from the word Tartarus, which Peter defines as the holding place for rebellious angels awaiting judgment. It's not a place of torment for human beings. Most often when we see Jesus say the word hell, it comes from the Greek word Gehenna. Now Gehenna is the Greek word for the Valley of Hinnom. It is a literal valley on the south side of Jerusalem. Jesus mentions this valley because in Jeremiah chapter 7 and 19, we see that whenever Jerusalem was attacked or destroyed by another nation, their dead bodies were thrown into this valley and eaten by creatures and burned. And the Lord makes this valley a symbol of destruction. This is why Jesus uses the word Gehenna. As for the language like unquenchable fire, fiery furnace, and eternal fire, we need to interpret these terms by looking at how they're used throughout the rest of Scripture, not just assuming we already know what they mean. And if we look throughout the Old Testament, these terms are frequently used to describe destruction, not eternal suffering the soul in the afterlife. The lake of fire is called death numerous times, and in Revelation it's called fire and brimstone and drinking God's wrath. Both of these terms speak of destruction throughout the Old Testament, never talking about eternal suffering. The story of the rich man and the beggar is not a true story, but a parable. Parables were folk tales of the day. Jesus only used parables when he taught. Jesus can't be teaching about the afterlife by using this parable because the concepts in this parable don't line up with the rest of scripture. Throughout the Old Testament, it says that people in Hades or Sheol rested or slept when they died, awaiting the resurrection. They were not conscious and they were not in torment. This parable can be found in the Babylonian Talmud. Much of what's in the Babylonian Talmud came from mythology the Jews learned from other pagan cultures while in captivity. If you go back to Luke chapter 15 verse 1, you see Jesus tells the Pharisees this parable because they're upset about him eating and drinking with the sinners and Gentiles. Jesus tells this parable they knew very well to warn the Pharisees who have rejected him that they soon will find themselves on the outside of covenant relationship with God and the Gentiles and the sinners will have relationship with God because of the new covenant Jesus was creating. He is not teaching theology about the afterlife because the concepts in this parable go against the rest of scripture. You see, Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. Jesus didn't come to save us from an angry God wanting to burn us for eternity. Jesus came to save us from death by giving us life and leading us to a loving and merciful Father. Thanks for watching. God bless. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that short video. For more information on the end times hell and the lake of fire, be sure to grab a copy of my new book called How the End Times Ended in 8070. It's available right now on Amazon.com.